In this video, I want to talk all about my Lightroom catalogue and how I organise it. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. And I say every time, don't know, on YouTube, fantastic to see you all again. Well, I did actually see you all, well, some of you anyway, um, who came to my exhibition. And I have to say, it was a pretty spectacular experience. Um, I don't know how many people came in total, but maybe five, 600 people, something like that. It was just amazing. For the three and a half days, I didn't stop chatting to people. And it was just incredible to turn YouTube numbers, because I just see likes and I see a few comments, which are really nice, into faces. And I just wanted to start this video, before I get into my Lightroom catalog, I'm just saying that, that, you know, we all go on Instagram, um, we get worried about whether we get 10 or 20 likes or 30 or 100 or 100 or 1,000. But every single one of those is a real person. Well, hopefully they are, <laughs> hopefully they're not bots, but they are, they're, they're real people. And, um, just to see that and to see those people and the impact that I've had on people's photography was just, I was really humbled to be honest. I just felt like it was an out of body experience. It just didn't feel real. So it was so, so nice. Um, and I just want to say thanks to everybody watching now and everyone that's watched my channel in the past. It really means a lot to me. Okay, on to Lightroom. So in this video, I want to chat about my Lightroom catalog. So not about, um, my um, editing, but how I s sort of structure my Lightroom catalog. I actually got quite a lot of questions about this in the exhibition and people were saying, how do you choose your photos for the exhibition? How do you structure it, etc." And I thought it'd make a really good video. The first thing to say is I've been doing this since 2002 um, and I've amassed around about sort of 275,000 photos in here, which is quite a lot of photos. I've got one catalog um, for of Lightroom and the only time I have a different catalog is when I go away. And I did a video here about how I merge those catalogs together um, and my sort of travel process. It's not gonna be like that. This is just my main catalog and how I structure that. So if you wanna know how I merge my travel Lightroom catalog with this catalog, watch this video. Okay, so I'm, the first thing I'm gonna do is go into the basics. Um, I would say that um, the, the photos and the videos, mainly the videos that I take, are so much now that I've also got to um, add more to my NAS drive. So I've got another Synology NAS and I've got these um, Iron Wolf 20 terabyte hard drives. Um, I'm gonna talk more about that later in the video. This video is sponsored by Seagate, so I wanna say thanks to Seagate for doing that. So I structure it first of all by year. So I have folders on my NAS that are all the years. So 2002, 2003, 2004. And then in those years, all, ever since the beginning, I then put it into quarters. So Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. So for instance, if I go to this year, I can see that I've got Q1, Q2, Q3. And then I, in the year, I got the project that I was doing or the, the trip that I went on. And if it's a bigger trip, so for instance, when I went to Luskentire and that was Harris here, then I split it into days. I only do that for really big trips though. I don't do it for everything. If I go on just a two day trip, then I might not do that. So once I've done that, I then um, get all my images into Lightroom, import them all in. So if we go and look at Q3, we can see that I went to Aaron. I can go and have a look at that Aaron project and I can see all my photos. In here, in Aaron, you can see that I've got all my images and the first thing I do is usually stack them so you can see that they're stacked one of three and the easy way to do that is just go to photo stack in and you can click auto stack by capture time and then what that does is it allows you to stack the images that were HDR images so it just makes it easier and then when I've done that I usually expand them all but I still can see which images are part of that HDR group which makes it really easy. And then um, I go through all my images and I choose the, the best ones, basically. The way I do that is just by put, doing a pick. So P for pick and key shortcuts are a really useful thing to learn. And I'll do, what I'll do is I'll put the shortcuts up as I use them. So P for pick. Um, and then when I've found all the picks, I know that all those photos are the photos that I think are decent. You know, they might, might be worth looking at in a bit more detail and potentially doing an edit on, but not all my pics get edited. Um, now, if I'm away, then I do that at the end of each day so that when I get back from a trip, then I've at least gone through that day's photos and done a, a brief first pass through and picked them. And then when I merge that library back into my main library, when I come back, 
then that really helps. So I can look at all my pics. Um, I can just click the filter button here um, and look at the flagged photos and then that shows me all my pics. So the, ne the next thing I would do is I would then go through these photos and I would find the ones that I thought were really well worth editing and I would put a star by them. So I'd either have a three star, four star or five star. Three star are for photos that um, I think should be edited, but I'm not 100% sure about whether it's going to end up in my portfolio or, or even in a YouTube video. Four star, I think that I'm really excited about. Five star, I think this is a really good, good image. It definitely needs editing. And it's probably... Now, I, I, I do up and downgrade my images later in the time. It's not like the final um, set of gradings that I give to that image. But, you know, that allows me then, when I go to, say, my Aaron things, to say, OK, show me all the five stars. And I know that these are all what I thought at the time were my best photos and are edited. So yeah, that's like a really basic level of just going through my photos and choosing which are the best ones. So then it comes down to catalogues and catalogues for me are a huge part of how I catalog my images because obviously I've got this, which is like a date thing. So if I think, oh, I'm sure I took it on that trip, I can go back and say, when was it? Q1, 2002. Um, and I can go and find that, that photo. But the, the real good thing for me is using catalogs, especially for YouTube, but for any projects that I do. So I use smart catalogs, and I also use just catalogs that I make based on groupings of images that I think make a collection, like a woodland images or something like that. I'll give you some examples. So the first thing I do is I have a automatic three, four, five star um, smart collection. So to do this, you click this plus icon here and you say create smart collection. And then I can then say, go and look at all my images. Um, and um, I want to say the rating is greater than three stars. And that then goes and creates that smart collection. I can give it a name. But you can do this for all sorts of things. I could have a smart collection that was all the photos taken with a particular lens or all the photos that have got a colour um, code. You can do it for so many different things. So smart collections are really, really good. Um, so the portfolio prints one, for instance, is all photos that are coloured purple, because anything that's coloured purple, I put into my portfolio prints, and you can see that these are all the purple ones. And I can go, and the reason I want to get to these quickly is that these are the ones that um, I print a lot. You know, if somebody orders a print, then I want to be able to get to them really quickly. The one thing to remember here, and we're going to get onto this in a minute, is that smart collections can't sync with Lightroom in the cloud. Um, and I'm going to get in, onto talking about Lightroom in the cloud. I'm going to show my iPad and, and how I use that. But smart collections don't do that. Um, so you've got to have other collections for that. So what I do is I create a collection called Best Star Photos, this one here. And that one, you can see there's a little sync button next to it. And I've said on that one, sync to the cloud. So if you just look at the setting on this, you can see that I can sync with Lightroom there. Um, and um, if I want to, I can make it a, a public collection as well, which is actually sometimes quite useful. Um, and then the other thing I do is create collections of images like for instance um, my exhibition i created an exhibition luskentire and that was a collection of images that i thought would be potentially in my ex exhibition and you can just drag and drop images into these collections and a photo can be a member of many collections as well so here i just put all these 34 photos in all from my book um, and then I went through and then I used color coding again. So all the blue ones ended up being ones that were in my exhibition. And these are the ones that, that I, I then printed out um, for my exhibition. And I do this for all sorts of things. So for instance, I've got another um, collection down here called YouTube. And that's got um, any YouTube editing videos that I've done where I've talked about maybe color or balance. And you know I can just chuck them into those collections. It's really useful. A really good idea is doing one for countries. So for instance, I've got one here for countries and I can see all my different countries here. And I've got one for England. I just need to get rid of the five stars there. So this is all my photos um, that I've taken in, in England. Now this countries one is work in progress. I asked my son to set this up for me and he went through um, all my best star photos and tried to guess where they were. Um, he did a pretty good job of it, but I'm still finding some um, Scotland photos in the Faroes or the I Iceland. Um, <laughs> it was quite tricky. 
So this is a thing that's a work in progress. The reason I do this is that sometimes it's good to be able to post something on Instagram of some photos from England or Scotland, and I just want to be able to go and find my best photos from those particular countries. You can do it so many different ways. You could color code the countries, or you could just use um, keywords as well. But I don't tend to use keywords a huge amount. Um, I did for my Luskentire project for the areas of the beach, but not, not a huge amount. And um, then let's look, look at syncing. So I just grab my iPad and we'll just look at syncing the photos and, and you know why I think that's useful. Okay, right, got it. Um, so this um, is Lightroom um, on my iPad. And basically, whenever there's a little, little double arrow here, that syncs and I get um, a version of that on my iPad. What's really good about that is I can go through and I can catalog them on my iPad. So if I want to, I can go to my three, my best star images. Um, so here are my best star images. And these are all images that got three, four or five stars. And I can go through and if I want to, I can go and edit some of those or I can go and download them. If I'm away, I can post some things on Instagram or Facebook. Um, or um, if I want, I can go through and catalog them a little bit better by maybe downgrading them from three, from five to three stars. It just, it just is so useful to be able to have a sync of the photos um, in those catalogs onto my iPad. It works fantastically well. Um, I use it all the time. And if you don't do that, I definitely, definitely recommend that you give it a go. So the other thing, um, I talked about keys being useful. G is a fantastically useful key. Um, if, you, if you click G, then it allows you to find images in your catalog. So for instance, if I go and look at all my three, four and five star images, then I can then go and set all sorts of different criteria for finding images. Now you think, well, why would I want to do that? But actually it's quite useful to improve your photography, I think, because you might want to look. So for instance, I, I could actually go into 2023 and see which um, lens I use the most. And I could go and look at those lenses and think, did I get a, you know some good five-star images or what? where did I get the most five-star images from? So in this case, I can see I've not taken a lot with my um, 14 to 24 and 14 to 30, um, but I have taken a lot with my 24 to 120. So maybe I just might want to just concentrate a little bit more on that sort of ultra wide end, see if I can improve um, getting you know some better five-star images on, 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 that, on that lens. Or maybe you want to go and have a look at some longer exposure images that you've done. So I could look from 20 seconds to four seconds and you can see that I've not done that many. I don't do many super long exposures, but I can go and see and think, did they work out? You know, what, is it worth me going to do some more um, images like that? It is really useful um, to look at all your images like that. And there's loads of different ways that you can catalog them. This is the way that I do it. It's pretty simple. I'm the most unorganized person. So to do this makes my life a lot easier with so many photos. So give it a go. Um, I just want to say thanks to this week's sponsor, which is Seagate. So I am just about to upgrade my NAS drive. And if you haven't got a NAS drive, then again, that's a really good way of working off multiple computers. Um, on your Lightroom um, catalog, you have to have a hard drive with your Lightroom catalog on. You can't run a Lightroom catalog off a network drive. But once you've got a NAS, you know, you've got two things. One, it's it's got some redundancy. So if a drive fails, but I've never had a drive fail, but if drive does fail, then you've got some redundancy. And then the second thing is you can back that NAS up to an online um, thing. And I talked all about that in this video. But Seagate make these um, Iron Wolf Pro drives. This is a 20 terabyte one. You obviously don't need that. But you know they do one, two, four, eight terabytes. They do all sorts of different sizes. And they are meant for NAS systems, which means that they're just more robust. They're more less likely to um, have a failure. And like I say, I've used these for years and years and years, and they've been fantastic. I'm going to extend this. So I've got five drives and I'm about to add another five drives in which should last me for another probably four or five years um, and yeah if you're looking to get some Seagate drives or um, a NAS I'll put the links in the description below and that's it really um, it's pretty simple um, everyone probably does things differently what I think would be really great is for everybody to share their tips 
um, below, um, tricks that they do use on Lightroom, anything that they found that works really well for them. And then we can get a bit of a, a collection of really good ideas in the comments. I think that'll make a really big difference. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm off to Ireland with um, Mass and Michael um, on Sunday. So I'm really looking forward to that. And um, I think there's going to be some pretty strong weather as well. So hopefully we should have some really exciting videos to come from there. Until next Sunday, bye. Thank you.